going to sublimate on glass here. Spectacular results. I'm going to be using some different substrates and it is go going to be like how I've done it before. I'll go over this in detail coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the Loft Above the Shop, and today I'm going to be showing you how to sublimate onto glass, different types of glass too, not just the Dollar Tree cutting boards like I've got here. In the past I've done it directly to vinyl, like this, and every once in a while you'll get one where the colors will bleed, like this one here. The colors bleed away from where you put them, especially with the black, and there are a few different things that can cause that. But I found a, a method here, actually it was at the suggestion of a viewer, can you use laminate on glass and sublimate to that laminate? Well I have tried that in the past and I always had a problem with it really getting the stick or I get air bubbles in it. Well I've kind of perfected a method now where you could take a photograph or a graphic of your choice and put it on the glass and you get just spectacular results using laminate and then I put white vinyl over the laminate so that you get a, a good rich picture. I'm getting reflections of the lights and everything else here but so what am I going to use for this? Well let me get some parts together and then I'll kind of explain how this works. I'm going to, there's going to be a lot of doubters and naysayers out there over the method I'm going to use here but it does work. So what are you going to need to do this project? Well, you're going to need some graphics made. And I've got two here and I've got uh, several more over on my sawgrass printer. My 2720s right here. Okay, to answer a few questions right off, can you use a laser jet printer? No. Can you use a regular inkjet printer? No. You need a printer with sublimation ink and preferably use sublimation paper. So no, you can't use a regular inkjet printer. You can't use a laser jet printer, it won't work. It's got to be for sublimation, using sublimation ink. So, the next thing you're going to need, these are laminate sheets. You get these at your, and these are stuck together. You get these at your uh, office supply store and normally you would open this up. Like so, put your document or whatever in there, put it over that and then run it through your lamination machine or put in a heat press or whatever to heat seal it in. We're going to be using this and we're going to be tearing them in half and I'll get into those steps here coming up. Also going to need some white vinyl. It doesn't need to be this curly. I'm using Oracle 651. Normally except this happens to be a roll of sizer. That works too. Permanent outdoor vinyl, not HTV. Next item you'll need is a substrate. So what do I have here? The infamous Dollar Tree cutting board. Glass. Dollar Tree picture frame. And mirror. Right there. There you can see the camera and the monitor and everything. So those are the uh, items I'm going to be putting uh, my graphics on. And I'll show you how to do this now, step by step. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to do is measure your project, or your, your substrate base. So my Dollar Tree cutting boards, and of course you want to tear the laminate sheet in half. And you've got a cloudy side and you've got a, a shiny side. The cloudy side is the side that's going to go down to the substrate, glass, mirror, whatever here. So I am actually going to cut this, because you want to cut it to size, because the way I do it here, the laminate does not shrink. So I'm going to lay this here. I'm going to actually cut this out of my Cricut because I already have a pattern for it. So I'll cut this on the Cricut next. The prep will be the same for each of the substrates, whether it be this Dollar Tree cutting board or the picture frame glass or the mirror. The prep will all be the same. You want to cut a piece of laminate to fit your project. Of course this comes with these little feet on it that I'm not going to need. 
pop them off. You could put these back on afterwards if you desire. Now you'll need to get your substrate clean. And I do mean clean. So what I use, I've got alcohol in this little, I have alcohol, isopropyl alcohol in this little press here, little makeup thing you get from Dollar Tree. It's a good little dispenser for it. So we'll get this glass good and clean on the side I'm going to be working on. Hey, once your glass is clean, I use a product called Rapid Tack. And I'll put a very light misting of that on my piece of glass. Then I will take my piece of laminate here and placing it with the cloudy side down, that'll go onto the glass. I'll get it all centered and square on all the edges. Then I'll take a squeegee of some sort and starting from the center, I'll go out towards the edges. And then I'll go over the whole thing, making sure that all of the air bubbles are out of it. I'll take a look here and make sure that there's no air bubbles anywhere. It's important that you have this step down perfect. If you have any air bubbles in there, it's really going to show up on your finished product. And once you're satisfied with how it looks, you can dry off the edges here. Now you'll be ready for your graphic, so I'm going to lay an old mat down here someplace. Yeah, I'll lay my graphic down here. Now, for this instance, you do not mirror your graphic. On the side you just put the laminate on, that side will go down on top of your graphic. You can get it centered as you wish. I made my graphic a little bit oversized, so I can get my position just the way I want it. And you'll need to apply some heat tape to keep things from shifting. So I am not applying the laminate with heat ahead of time. I'm doing this all in one shot. Somebody's going to disagree with me, but it works perfect every time. So there's my first project prepped. I'll get another one ready. As I mentioned about pre-cutting the uh, laminate, what if you don't have a Cricut? You don't have to have one. This is, I'm going to use a Cricut mat here, it's a cutting mat, but you could use any cutting mat. Just down here and get her smoothed out and stuck. I'll just lay my mirror on here, face down, because I don't want to look at myself while I'm doing this. And you can use a factory edge if you wish, one side, actually on two sides. Then you will just cut around the outside of that. I need to get my mirror clean. It doesn't look like I cut that one super straight, but we're going to hide that anyway. So you definitely want to have this clean. Windex would work. I like to use alcohol in case there's any kind of oils or anything on there. Want to make sure you're not leaving any fuzz behind or any kind of marks, fingerprints, because it will show up later on this mirror. I got my piece of laminate here again. Just a little light misting of rapid tack. The cloudy side, dull side of the laminate down. Get my cutting mat out of the way there. Get back down on the towel. You know, in this case, you're going to need to mirror your graphic. So here's my graphic I'm going to be using. And I will be laying this with the laminate side down. Of course, the mirror backing will be facing me. We'll get things lined up there. And I already have know where I wanted to be on here. And we'll heat tape those edges down. And that one's ready to go. And the next one will be the glass out of the Dollar Tree photo frame. 
Now here is some place you're going to have to be careful because this glass in these very inexpensive frames is very thin. It's very easy to break. On the back side here we got the little tabs we got to bend up out of the way. Move the backing. Remove the picture that came with it. Then carefully remove the glass. And I do mean carefully, but this glass is very thin. So now we'll need to get a piece of laminate cut to fit that. And I'll use the same method here. And of course, I need to clean my glass. Rapid tack. Again, cloudy side down on the laminate. Get it all positioned here. Look it over, make sure you don't have any air bubbles. Again, be very careful with this Dollar Tree glass. From these picture frames, it'll break real easy. Guess how I know that? Oh, I'll lay my graphic down, and of course, this one is not mirrored. Put our glass on there with the laminate side down. Get a position where you want it. And I know the question is going to come up, what about that heat tape dispenser? Where'd you get that? That's an Amazon thing. They're not expensive. Some people love them. Some people hate them. I happen to like it. And I use it quite a bit. So we're all prepped there and ready for the heat press. From the helpful hints department is uh, when you get ready to do glass like this, preheat your heat press and then run it a cycle with nothing in it. That preheats the mat on the bottom. You'll get a lot better results. Otherwise, your first project always comes out a little bit uh, underdone, so to speak. Yeah, our time and temperature setting here is 385 degrees for 180 seconds. Medium pressure, not super, super heavy on this uh, light glass. On the cutting board glass, you could go a little heavier if you wanted to. So I've got everything all preheated here. Lay a piece of paper down there. We're going to start with the Dollar Tree picture frame glass. You'll want it face up. So in other words, your sublimation paper and your graphic will be at the bottom. Piece of paper on top. And we'll let it press. Okay, the best way to press these is take a piece of butcher paper, parchment paper, whatever, make a sandwich, hold the mayo, put your project inside it like so. Set it down, make sure that the uh, graphic is on the bottom, the glass is on the top. I'm showing this second method of just as a little information, makes it a little bit easier to take it off the press. And we'll press this one. Hey, there's the first one we just took off. It is extremely important not to mess with that until it completely cools off. Don't try to peel it, don't shift it, don't do anything with it. Just let it set until it gets completely cool. Make absolutely sure you got Heat resistant gloves on. You grab that glass without them, you'll only do it once. Now it's important that you don't shift anything when you take this off. Let me get my Teflon sheet back up in there, right? And here's the one with the mirror. And again, the graphic side goes down. There's my last one with the mirror, and I'm actually going to shut my heat press off and just swing this out of the way and let that one cool right there on the mat because I'm out of places to set stuff. So I'll just let that cool right there. So here's the first one we took off. 
This is on the uh, Dollar Tree picture frame glass. Let's peel the back of that off. See, we got a real good color transfer. And I'll get my heat tape pieces peeled off carefully because this glass is also very sharp. So here's where you have some choices. It's more or less a transparency right now. You can see right through it. So you can either put white vinyl behind it, put a piece of white paper behind it, or you could backlight it. It de just depends on what kind of effect you want. It'll be even more substantial on the thicker glass from that cutting board. This kind of gives you an idea here. So I'm going to get this put back into the picture frame with some white paper behind it. So here's our Dollar Tree glass with the laminated, sublimated paper behind it. Picture in the frame. And if you uh, just use white paper like I did, it gives a little bit of a dimensional look. If you would apply vinyl to the back, that some of that dimension would go away. The colors would be a little bit more vivid and sharp. I'll show you what I mean by that on when I do the cutting board one here. So what I need to do for that, for the cutting board one, right here, oh, that's still pretty warm. I need to uh, cut a piece of vinyl to fit the back of that. I really hate the end of a roll of vinyl. It curls up so bad like that. It also makes it fun when you're trying to put it down on your cutting mat. Again, this is permanent outdoor vinyl. I would normally use Oracle 651. We had a partial roll of sizer here, which will work just as well. And while the vinyl's cutting back there, this is cooled off enough to grab now. Again, it looks like a transparency. If you were to backlight that, it look pretty striking. Again, it depends on what you want to do with it. So there, you're looking at a blue towel for a background, and it's kind of strange and textured looking. Again, it all depends on what kind of look you're going for. A lot of different options and things you could do with it. But I'm going to put vinyl on the back. White vinyl. And here again, to avoid any air bubbles, a little bit of rapid tack. That's what's nice about Rapid Tack is if you got an air bubble, you can take it right out. Oh, there we are. That's my great granddaughter, by the way, Paisley. Having a little bit of fun last fall on her little motorized trike. So, what can you do with this from here? Well, you could put the feet back on the back of it and use it for a, a cutting board, although I wouldn't. However, do not use a laminate fitted picture like this as a trivet for something very hot because it will soften that laminate up and the laminate will let go. That's, I know that from experience. So next one I need to get is that mirror. We got our mirror, mirror here. As you can see, this gives you a very, very different look. It's almost holographic. There's that kind of holographic look when you apply that laminate on mirror, then sublimate to it. It's probably kind of hard to tell with the camera angle and the camera and everything here, but as you move this, it the look changes. I mean, it maybe when I get the camera back over at my table, I'll be able to show that a little bit better, but it, things really change when you move the picture from side to side and how the light hits it. So there's how you can do laminate on glass and sublimate to it and make it permanent. I mean, it, it's stuck. It'll stay there. It's not going to peel off unless you would put something real hot on it. And I don't think I would set it out in the sun either. Well, this would be an indoor thing. I wouldn't be using this outdoors. Uh, getting back to this one with on the mirror with a little bit of a holographic look, get this out of the so it doesn't shine in the light quite so bad. But as you move this around, it'll look different. 
you get different types of reflections. It's, it's kind of neat. I need to put this into a frame because that's kind of fragile like it is. Uh, this is on the Dollar Tree cutting board right here and has the white vinyl back. And there again, you could put the feet back on it if you wanted to or you could use it as a just a decoration. You, it depends what you want to do with your graphic or what graphic you would decide you wanted to pick. Doesn't have to be a person. Maybe you want to have baby sharks. It's entirely up to you. Uh, of course, and then on the Dollar Tree picture frame glass, with just a piece of white paper behind it. So there's the three options. So some other questions I'm going to get. I know. Do you have to use Rapid Tack? Yeah, pretty much. You water will work, but there's uh, the properties of Rapid Tack. Make that laminate stick to that glass until you get it into the heat press and get it pressed. No, you don't need to pre-press the laminate. And a lot of people will put the laminate on and then pre-press it to stick it and then put their stuff on top to sublimate to it. You don't need to do that here. This is a one-shot thing. It's, just, it's a sandwich, but again, hold the mail. You've got your glass. You've got the laminate. You've got your sublimation print on your paper. You put that on there. Make a little sandwich out of butcher paper, parchment paper. Press it. Take it out. Do not disturb it when you first take it out. Or it'll ghost. Or you could possibly have that lamination slide on there because that would be very soft when you first take it out. Take it out carefully, set it off, let it cool off, then peel it and do everything else. Nothing. You won't have to worry about it sticking because the uh, sublimation paper does not stick to the laminate. So you won't have a problem there. Another thing to watch out for, of course, is air bubbles. By using the Rapid Tack, you pretty much eliminate any chance of air bubbles. And you can inspect your uh, project before you actually press it to make sure there are no air bubbles there and you can squeegee them out. That's what's uh, one of the great properties of Rapid Tack. And yeah, I ran about Rapid Tack quite a bit. We use gallons of it around here. And I'm not sponsored by them. They don't give me anything. They don't even know I talk about them. But it's a good product to use. So where did I get all this stuff? Well, the tape dispenser again, I'll there'll be a link for that. There'll be a link for the different types of paper I use. The ink, all that stuff will be in the description. The picture frame and the little uh, cutting board thing, that's a Dollar Tree item, buck and a quarter. And the mirror is actually part of a mirror tile. And you can buy those at your home store. They come 12 by 12. I cut this down to 8 by 10 so I'd be able to put it into a frame, which I don't have. Maybe I can make one. I have a wood shop. Oh, so if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Of course, we're always looking for subscribers. I'm Roger in the loft above the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.